Chapter 25 The Universal Door of Guashu Yen Bodhisattva The Wonderful Dharma Lotus Flower Sutra has seven roles and is divided into 28 chapters. This is Chapter 25, the Universal Door Chapter. It deals with the spiritual powers and miraculous functions of the inconceivable state of Guashuyin Bodhisattva, the Bodhisattva who contemplates the sounds of the world. There are ten causal conditions for the speaking of this chapter. 1. Person and Dharma The person is Guashuyin Bodhisattva. The Dharma is the manifestation of the universal door. Guashuyin Bodhisattva saves beings from the seven difficulties, counteracts the three poisons, and responds to the two kinds of seeking. Guashuyin Bodhisattva is an inconceivable person. The manifestation of the universal door the response to all seeking and the penetration of all responses is an inconceivable dharma. Since it is inconceivable, it is called wonderful dharma. Due to the causes and conditions of the wonderful person and the wonderful dharma, the universal door chapter is spoken. Two. Kindness and Compassion The second causal condition is kindness and compassion. Because of compassion, Guashuyin Bodhisattva speaks the Universal Door chapter. What is kindness and compassion? Kindness bestows happiness. Compassion relieves beings of sufferings. Guashuyin Bodhisattva saves living beings from the seven difficulties, counteracts the three kinds of poison, and responds to the two kinds of seeking of living beings. The seven difficulties are enumerated in the text itself. The three poisons are greed, hatred, and stupidity. The two seekings are seeking for a son, and seeking for a daughter. Living beings are all poisoned by greed, hatred, and stupidity. However, if a person who has much greed can always reverently recite the name of Guashuryin Bodhisattva, he can separate from greed. If he has a lot of hatred, and can always reverently recite the name of Guashuyin Bodhisattva, he can separate from hatred. If he is very stupid and always reverently recites the name of Guashuyin Bodhisattva, he can leave his stupidity. There are many forms of greed, and just as many, if not more, forms of hatred. Stupidity, however, takes neither too many nor too few forms. Stupidity means a lack of wisdom and a lack of deep understanding. It causes one to fail to perceive the principles underlying various events. In China, the philosopher Wang Yang Ming Define stupidity as conduct that doesn't accord with one's knowledge. He said, Why does one fail to do things? Because one doesn't understand. If one understood, one would act accordingly. Some people say, Well, it's possible for people to understand but still not act accordingly. Wang Yang Ming would answer, They don't really understand. If they did, they would act accordingly. 
His philosophy was, understanding and doing are one. If a person really understood, he wouldn't do stupid things. Why do people do stupid things? Because they don't really understand. There's a poem about stupid people that goes, Why aren't the flowers always in bloom? Why isn't the moon always full? If only all the waters of the earth would turn to wine, and the leaves of the trees turn to gold. Someone says, I wish my flowers would always bloom and never fade. People who like the moon wish it would always be full and never wax or wane. The full moon is so bright and pretty, and I don't need to light lamps, so I save money. Wouldn't you say that was stupid? Can the moon be full every night? No, that's impossible. People who like to drink think, Every day I have to go buy my bottle of whiskey or brandy, and it's very expensive. Wouldn't it be great if the lake turned into liquor? I could just go down to the lake and take a drink whenever I felt like it. People who are greedy for money think, I have to go to work to earn money. It's really painful. If all the leaves of the trees turned to money, wouldn't that be great? But that's obviously impossible. It's just another form of wishful thinking. Another stupid person may wish for a PhD degree when he hasn't even gone to elementary school or high school. That too is stupid. Someone may want to win the horse races when he hasn't even bought a ticket. Stupid as it is, most people fall prey to such types of thinking. So, what's to be done? If you are prone to this type of thinking, you should change, that's all. With great kindness, Guashirian Bodhisattva helps living beings leave suffering and attain to bliss. The universal door of Guashirian Bodhisattva chapter is spoken out of great kindness and great compassion. 3. Blessings and Wisdom It is said that Guashirian Bodhisattva follows the sounds to relieve beings from suffering. He distinguishes all the different sounds in the world, good sounds, bad sounds, sounds of suffering, sounds of joy, sounds of what is right, and sounds of what is wrong. He does this with his wisdom. Where does his wisdom come from? It comes from the practice of giving. He gives the Dharma to living beings, and as a result, he gains boundless wisdom and blessings. 4. True Body and Response Bodies Guashirian Bodhisattva uses the wonderful power of the true body to rescue living beings from the seven kinds of difficulty, to counteract the three poisons, and to fulfill the two kinds of seeking. He also manifests in 32 kinds of response bodies. The Universal Door Chapter is spoken on the basis of the true body and the response bodies. Five, Medicine King Tree. What is the Medicine King Tree? Long, long ago, there was a man who went into the mountains to gather firewood. 
Then he would take it to the market to sell. One day he met a doctor. The doctor saw something emitting light in the firewood, so he bought the wood and took it home. When the doctor opened the bundle, he found a medicine king tree. No matter what illnesses people had, all the doctor had to do was swish the medicine king tree over the patients, or gently tap them with it, and they would be cured. In this way, he saved many people. What is the wish-fulfilling pearl? Wish fulfilling means that you obtain what you wish according to your heart's desire. If you want something nice to eat, something very delicious would manifest from inside the pearl for you. If you want some nice clothes, the outfit of your dreams will manifest from the wish fulfilling pearl. This pearl can manifest clothing, food, and even a place to live. You can say, "Tonight, I want to stay in the most beautiful house," and it will manifest for you. The next day, the house will go right back into the pearl. The pearl can manifest exactly the right amount of food for you. Never too much or too little. That's why it's called wish fulfilling. As to your clothes, you won't need to hang them up in the closet, because when you are done wearing them, they will go right back into the pearl. How big is the pearl? It's pretty small. You can carry it with you. It's not heavy, and it doesn't take a lot of room. A man is thinking, "Can it get me a pretty wife?" Well, I don't know about that. A woman is thinking, "Can it get me a handsome husband?" Don't ask me. I really don't know. In any case, then, the Universal Door Chapter is like a Medicine King tree and a wish-fulfilling pearl. It fulfills your wishes just as you desire. All you have to do is recite the Universal Door Chapter, and you will get what you wish for. You can't recite it today, however, and have a response tomorrow. You have to lay a good foundation first. It's like constructing a building. You have to lay the foundation first. Without the foundation. You can't erect the building. The Universal Door Chapter is like a Medicine King tree and a wish-fulfilling pearl. It is that magical, amazing, and inconceivable. But you first have to recite it. You should recite it every day until Guanyin Bodhisattva thinks that you have passed the test and you are sincere enough. If you don't recite it regularly, you can't obtain a response when you need one. You have to apply effort in your cultivation in an ordinary manner. Then, an inconceivable response has a chance to occur. Someone says, "There are too many things to learn in Buddhism. There's the Sharangama Mantra, the Great Compassion Mantra." And now the Universal Door Chapter. When am I going to find time for all of this? It doesn't take that much time. All you have to do is skip an hour of sleep and do a little less chatting with people. If you have no aspirations or no wishes that you would like to fulfill, then you don't need to recite it. If you say, "I don't want anything." I'm not greedy for anything. I'm not hateful or stupid, so I don't need to recite this. Then, what's there to talk about? 
If you feel that perhaps you might run into trouble and need Guanyin Bodhisattva's help in the future, then you should certainly study a bit more Buddha Dharma. The Buddha Dharma is like a great sea, and none of you have drunk even one drop of it yet. You'll never be able to drink it all. But even though you can't drink it all, you can drink your fill according to your capacity. The Buddha Dharma is endless for the taking and inexhaustible in its function. Thus, we study and recite the Universal Door chapter because it is like the Medicine King tree and the wish-fulfilling pearl. 6. Manifest and Secret When you recite the Universal Door chapter, sometimes you will obtain a revealed or a manifest response. At other times you will obtain a secret or hidden response. A manifest response is one that everyone can see and understand. The Universal Door chapter says, if he enters a great fire, the fire will not burn him. While the great fire blazes, if you single-mindedly believe in Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva and recite his name with true faith, the houses around may burn down, but your house won't. But this applies only if it's an accident. You can't decide to try it out and light a fire to see if your house will burn. If you do that, your house is sure to burn down. Why? Because you're testing Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva. This shows that you don't have adequate faith. That's like testing your friend to see if he's really a loyal friend. I'll just leave $500 here on the ground. If he's a good person, he won't take it. If he's a bad person, he will. But why do you want to test out your friend? Because you don't really recognize him. You don't truly know if he is a good friend. If you don't believe the Sutra, and you feel you have to test it out to see if the fire will burn you, you basically don't believe in Guashir Yin Bodhisattva. Since you don't believe in Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva, he doesn't have the time to watch over your affairs. Go ahead and burn your house down if you like. If you want to commit suicide and jump into the ocean to see if the water will drown you so that you can test out Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva's spiritual powers, Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva is not going to pay any attention to you. Since you don't believe in him, He's not going to involve himself in your business. But if your house accidentally catches fire and you recite with true sincerity, you won't be burned. But it has to be accidental. It can't be something that you try as an experiment. Well, ultimately, I won't know if it's true or false if I don't test it out you say. If you know it's true, then what? If you don't know it's true, then what? Whether you know or don't know that it's true, you still have to eat and wear clothes in order to live. So isn't it a superfluous question? So, the neighbor's house burns down, but yours doesn't. That's called a manifest response. Everyone knows about it. There may also be a secret response. For example, perhaps you are due for some calamity. You were due to fall into the sea and drown. But Guanyin Bodhisattva secretly arranges it so that the calamity doesn't happen. Nobody knows about it. Even you don't know about it. You were supposed to undergo a calamity, but it disappeared. That's called a secret response. Say someone was supposed to be burned to death in a fire, but he believes in Guanyin Bodhisattva 
and his disaster vanishes. You could have been due to die in a plane crash, a train crash, or on the highway. But because you believe in Guanyin Bodhisattva and you sincerely recite the Universal Door Chapter and the Great Compassion Mantra, Guanyin Bodhisattva secretly and silently dispels calamities and turns your misfortune into good fortune. Everything is auspicious and as you wish. Thus, the Universal Door Chapter was spoken because of the manifest and secret responses. Both the manifest and secret responses are perfectly interpenetrating, and so the merit and virtue of the Universal Door Chapter is inconceivable. The Great Compassion Mantra functions in this inconceivable manner as well as the Universal Door Chapter. Once, in Manchuria, there was a farmer who was returning home with his friend from a business trip. When he was almost halfway home, he saw a band of robbers about a mile up ahead. What was he going to do? He couldn't run away because the robbers had caught sight of him, and so he was sure to be robbed. Just at that moment, he recited the Great Compassion Mantra. When he got to where the robbers were, one of them came forward and took the reins from the driver, saying, I'll drive. They drove right through the gang of bandits as if they were invisible. When they were safely through, the man gave the reins back to the driver. The farmer said, you saved us from the robbers today. What is your name? Where do you live? I would like to send you a reward. The man said, My name is Usher Yun. Now everyone knows that the line, Usher Yun, is from the Great Compassion Mantra and that it's also the name of a Dharma protector. At that time, the farmer didn't remember that Usher Yin was a line from the Great Compassion Mantra. After the man left, he remembered. He's a Dharma protector in the Great Compassion Mantra. This is an inconceivable state manifested from the Great Compassion Mantra. But if you recite it just to test it out, Usher Yin isn't going to show up. It's only if you recite and believe in the mantra that unlucky circumstances can be turned into lucky ones. If you run into Usher Yin, be sure to recognize him. Don't be like the farmer who didn't remember who he was until he was gone. Seven, provisional and real. Guanshuyin Bodhisattva uses the power of the Dharma body to secretly benefit living beings. This is called the real. He also uses the 32 response bodies to teach and transform living beings. This is the provisional. Guanshuyin Bodhisattva provides living beings a temporary teaching to lead them to the real teaching. Because of the provisional and the real, the Universal Door Chapter was spoken. 8. Roots and Traces With the Dharma body, Guanshur Yin Bodhisattva saves all living beings. The Dharma body is the root. The response bodies used to teach and transform living beings are the traces. Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva's Dharma body is like the moon. That's the root. The traces are like the moon's reflections in all the waters. The moon lends its reflections to the waters of a thousand rivers. 
The Universal Door chapter is spoken because of the root and traces. With one Dharma body, Washer Yin Bodhisattva manifests within the hearts of living beings. He causes all living beings to change from evil and go towards the good, to leave suffering and attain bliss, and ultimately to become Buddhas. Someone is thinking, No wonder I haven't changed for the better. Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva hasn't manifested in my heart. That's why I don't wish to change my faults. Those who smoke think. Probably the reason I haven't quit smoking is that Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva isn't helping me. Someone who likes to drink is thinking. It's Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva's fault that I haven't quit drinking. He isn't helping me. And suddenly he is upset with Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva. He's unfair. Why does he help other people but not me? Now that is stupidity added onto stupidity. Why isn't Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva helping you? Because you don't listen to his instructions. Hearing Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva's name, you should reform yourself and go toward the good. You should calm your mind down and cool off. Let go of the past and concentrate on doing better in the future. For instance, if you take the precepts, you must keep them. If you know something is wrong, but you still go ahead and do it anyway, then your offenses are doubled. It's a mistake to blame Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva for not protecting you. Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva wants to help you out, but you keep the door of your mind closed. You don't let him help. All that Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva can do is sigh and say, You are truly pitiful. So don't blame Guanxu Yin Bodhisattva. 9. Condition and Finality Condition refers to causes and conditions. Finality means putting an end to the cause. It also means understanding the cause. During this summer session, people get up very early in the morning and use every minute to study the Dharma. Those who live far away rise at 4 o'clock in the morning so that they can come to meditate and study the Sutra. There are even students working on their PhDs, master's and bachelor's degrees from the University of Washington in Seattle who have come to join the session. This shows that they recognize the importance of the Buddha Dharma. Why have people come from such great distances to hear the Dharma? Because they want to understand and put an end to the cause. Hearing the Sutra plants a seed for putting an end to the cause. During the first 96 days summer session in 1968, people were so absorbed in their work that they didn't taste their food or drink and didn't know whether they were awake or asleep. What were they doing? They were single-mindedly studying the Sharangama Sutra. Every day from 6 in the morning till 9 at night, they listened to four hours of lectures, meditated, did their own personal practices and took meals. The time passed swiftly, and although people had some afflictions, I believe they didn't take them too seriously. The 96 days were soon up, realizing the importance of studying the Buddha Dharma, over 10 of these people moved from Seattle to San Francisco. 
They gave away most of their possessions and everything. Among them, the translator was the first one to move down. He was studying at the University of Washington and could have graduated much earlier. But since he has transferred to the University of California at Berkeley, it will take him longer to graduate. This shows how these students all look upon the Buddha Dharma as important, and so they have come from many miles away to study it. In the future, when you have understood the Buddha Dharma, you will be able to teach it to your fellow Americans. Then I won't have to expend so much energy. I explained the sutra once, and you don't understand. So I explained it again, and you still don't understand. Why? Because I can't speak English. Those who know Chinese can understand me, but those who don't can't. For example, Guoyo is very sincere, but when I lecture, he just stares at me without any idea of what I'm saying. So it's very difficult. Now that you are learning the Buddha Dharma, you can explain it very naturally and eloquently without even thinking about it. This will make it much easier. Thus, the Universal Door chapter is spoken because of the condition and finality. Ten, wisdom and severing. Another reason is the pair of wisdom and severing. Guanshuyin Bodhisattva is adorned with both the virtue of wisdom and the virtue of severing. With the virtue of wisdom, he teaches and transforms living beings. With the virtue of severing. He cuts through and severs all forms of ignorance. The virtue of severing can also be called the virtue of blessings, because the bodhisattva has severed ignorance. He is truly adorned with blessings. The Buddha is complete with blessings and wisdom, although a bodhisattva. Guanshuyin is also adorned with blessings and wisdom. Taken all together, these are the ten causal conditions for the speaking of the Universal Door Chapter of the Wonderful Dharma Lotus Flower Sutra. Before we delve into the sutra text. Let's look into the meaning of the name Guanshuyin Bodhisattva, a bodhisattva who contemplates the world's sounds. Guan, contemplate, is the wisdom that contemplates. Shu Yin, the world's sounds, are the states he contemplates. No matter what the sound is. This bodhisattva knows it. He knows all the sounds of living beings, every single sound. Why? Because he contemplates them all day long. Sounds are basically heard, not seen. Why is it said he contemplates or observes them? Can you see sounds? No, but Guanshuyin Bodhisattva can see them. You can't see them, but he can. He sees them as if they were on a radar screen. Every living being manifests as a blip on his radar screen. He can chart your every sound. That's one way to explain it. There's another way. And that is that Guanshuyin Bodhisattva can see with his ears, and hear with his eyes. Even though we say he observes the sounds of the world, he can also hear with his eyes. Not only can he see with his eyes, he can hear with them as well. Why? Because he has the spiritual powers of the interpenetration of the six sense organs, 
Those who cultivate the Dharma Flower Sutra will obtain the purity of the six faculties. They can then use the six sense organs in mutual interpenetration. How much the more so can Guashir Yim Bodhisattva? Guashir Yim Bodhisattva then can speak with his ears, eat with his ears, listen with his eyes, and think with his eyes. Guashir Yim Bodhisattva gained the state of the mutual interpenetration of the six sense organs a long, long time ago, and so he is able to contemplate the sounds of the world. Why does he want to look after so many things? You ask. Observing sounds all day long, what use is that? Guanshiri and Bodhisattva does this because he cannot put down living beings, you, me, and others. He sees all living beings as his own children. Guanshiri and Bodhisattva is like a mother to all of us. He is always checking to see which child is crying, which child is laughing, and which child might be cold or hungry. He is busy all day long looking after all of his kids. Does that make him some kind of a babysitter? You ask. Pretty much, yes, but he doesn't get paid. Too bad. Because he can't put living beings down, he wants to contemplate the sounds of the world. He looks to see what sufferings living beings are undergoing, and he finds a way to help them. When he sees living beings involved in a disaster, he saves them from it. Guashir Yim Bodhisattva follows the sounds to rescue beings from suffering. If you are suffering, all you have to do is recite Namo Guashir Yim Bodhisattva and you'll find your unlucky circumstances turn into good fortune. Everything will turn out just as you want it to. Most people don't know about this most wonderful Dharma and so when they are in the greatest danger, it doesn't occur to them to recite Guanshu Yim Bodhisattva's name. If, in great danger, you can remember to recite Guanshu Yim Bodhisattva's name, you will be okay. If you are in a fire, it won't burn you. If you are in the water, you won't drown. If you don't know how to swim, you'll just find yourself in a shallow place. Such are the responses from Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva. All you have to do when in great danger is recite Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva's name. You are sure to gain a response and be rescued. But you must have faith. You can't waver between faith and doubt. Let's say you are in a fire and you are reciting Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva's name. But you're thinking, this isn't going to work. Nothing is that magical. With that one doubt, he won't be able to rescue you. Why not? Because you don't believe. You must believe single-mindedly. I am reciting and Guanshu Yim Bodhisattva will certainly come and save me. Let's say a tiger is just about to swallow you up. You shut your eyes and recite, Namo Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva. Suddenly the tiger won't be able to open its mouth. That's how powerful Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva is. Bodhisattvas are beings who enlighten other living beings. They are also called living beings with great minds for the way. They are those who enlighten sentient beings. They can also be called 
sentient beings who are enlightened. Sutra At that time, inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva rose from his seat, uncovered his right shoulder, placed his palms together, and facing the Buddha said, World Honored One, for what reason is the Bodhisattva Guanshur Yin called Guanshur Yin? Commentary At that time refers to the time when the chapter on the Bodhisattva Wondra Sound was finished and the Universal Door chapter was about to begin. This is the time when inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva, being present in the Dharma Flower Assembly, Ask the Buddha how Guashuryan Bodhisattva got his name. Inexhaustible intention is the Bodhisattva's name. In general, there are three kinds of inexhaustibility. One, the inexhaustibility of worlds like floating motes of dust. We shouldn't think that the world consists simply of what our eyes can see or our ears can hear. There are limitless, boundless worlds. This world, that world, and an infinite number of worlds. These worlds are like floating specks of dust. Why floating? Because they are in a state of constant agitation and movement, they are never stilled. Another aspect of dust is that it is not clean. Our world is filled with dust. When the sun comes out and shines through a slightly open window, you'll see an infinite number of dust particles dancing bobbing up and down. Where does all this dust come from? From the minds of living beings. Why? Because living beings' minds have too much idle thinking. Idle thinking is like floating dust. Take a look at how much idle thinking you are aware of. Try to imagine how much idle thinking you cannot perceive. In a single thought, there are 90 kashanas. A kashana is the briefest instant of time. In one kashana, there are 900 births and deaths. So where do all these worlds come from? They come from living beings' idle thoughts. Relying on the true, they give rise to the false. From a single false thought, the mountains, the rivers, the great earth, and all the buildings and vegetation are created. 2 the inexhaustibility of living beings with their vast karma. Worlds are boundless, and boundless living beings are created out of these worlds. Living beings are born from a mass of causes and conditions. Some are born from wombs, others from eggs, moisture, or transformation. These are discussed in detail in the Sharangama Sutra. Living beings are born from wombs because of the emotion of love. Other beings are born from eggs because of thought. Where do living beings come from? They come from the Buddha nature. 
We say, all living beings have the Buddha nature, and all can become Buddhas. But this is not the same as saying, living beings are Buddhas. You can't become a Buddha without cultivating. You have to cultivate, meditate, and study the Buddha Dharma. Then you can return to the root and go back to the source and become a Buddha. You can't say, living beings are Buddhas. We don't need to cultivate. That's just deviant knowledge and deviant views. You must cultivate to become a Buddha. Three, the bottomlessness of the river of love with its endless waves. Not just people, but also animals are attached to love. They aren't clear about principle, and their sexual desire is very strong. You should lessen your desires and purify your mind. Pare away your thoughts of desire. Then you won't be far from Buddhahood. Why is the river of love bottomless? Because the more you fall, the more you tend to fall. The deeper you sink, the deeper you get mired. Thoughts of desire are like waves which never stop. Why are there waves on the sea? Because there are waves in our minds. The waves in our minds are made from the river of love, which flows without stopping. No matter how sharp a knife you may use to try to cut off your emotional love, it's still not easily severed. But it said that the sword of wisdom can slice through emotion. With genuine wisdom, you can solve this problem and cut it off. Without wisdom, you fall into the bottomless river of love. Because of these three kinds of inexhaustibility, inexhaustible intention bodhisattva wishes to turn inexhaustible worlds into the land of ultimate bliss, to cause inexhaustible living beings to become Buddhas, and to fill up the bottomless, inexhaustible river of love. That's why he's called inexhaustible intention. Bodhisattva is a Sanskrit word that means enlightened being. Bodhi is the way of enlightenment. A sattva is one with sentience. A bodhisattva uses the doctrines of awakening to the way to enlighten all beings with sentience. The bodhisattva resolves, I am enlightened and I am going to find a way to cause all beings to become enlightened. This is to enlighten oneself and enlighten others. Where do bodhisattvas come from? They come from living beings. Bodhisattvas start off as living beings, just like you and me. However, they become enlightened living beings. We living beings are confused. They have awakened. If you wake up today, you are a bodhisattva today. If you wake up tomorrow, you'll be a bodhisattva tomorrow. Wake up to what? Wake up to your ignorance. If you can know where your ignorance came from and break through it, you are awakened. If you cannot break through your ignorance, you are confused. When one breaks through ignorance, the Dharma nature manifests. Ignorance disappears and the river of love dries up. 
once the river of love has dried up, your wisdom can manifest. So a bodhisattva is a person who enlightens others, an enlightened one among living beings. Bodhisattvas are also called living beings with great minds for the way. They are also called initiating knights. They can open up living beings to pity in order to reveal the original Buddha nature. When the Dharma Flower Sutra was spoken, five thousand people in the assembly walked out. Who were they? They were those with overweening pride, the arrogant. And haughty ones. When Shakyamuni Buddha started lecturing on the Dharma Flower Sutra, he said, "I am now lecturing the real truth. I am not speaking provisionally." These five thousand people were unhappy with him and left in a huff. Having heard the wondrous sound Bodhisattva chapter. Inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva. Then, rose from his seat. In a large assembly, if you want to say something, you have to stand up. You can't just raise your hand. Not only did he stand up, but he uncovered his right shoulder. That was a custom to show respect in India. And so today, our sashes don't cover the right shoulder. In India and Southeast Asia, the monks don't have clasps on their sashes; they just wear them as clothes. They don't need a clasp, since the robe is their main piece of clothing and is next to the skin. If it falls off, they will know. In China, the monks wear clothing underneath their sashes, and so if their sashes fall off, it's not easy for them to detect it. That's why they attach a clasp to their sashes. Inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva, uncovered his right shoulder as a gesture of respect, placed his palms together, and facing the Buddha, said. World honored one. World honored one means that the Buddha is honored by those in and beyond the world. The narrative preceding the phrase "world honored one" was added by Ananda at the time the sutra was compiled. For what reason is the Bodhisattva Guanshuyin called Guanshuyin? With great compassion, Guanshuyin Bodhisattva rescues people from the seven difficulties, counteracts the three poisons, and responds to the two kinds of seeking. He has fourteen kinds of fearlessness and nineteen ways of speaking Dharma. For what reason is he called Guanshuyin Bodhisattva? What Dharma did he cultivate in the past that he is now called Guanshuyin? Sutra. The Buddha told inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva. Good man, if any of the limitless. Hundreds of thousands of myriads of koti of living beings, who are undergoing all kinds of suffering, hear of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva, and recite his name single-mindedly. Guanshuyin Bodhisattva will immediately hear their voices and rescue them. Commentary. The Buddha told inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva. 
This is also a phrase of narrative spoken by the sutra compiler Ananda. Good man, said Shakyamuni Buddha. If any of the limitless hundreds of thousands of myriads of koti of living beings, let us assume that there are countless living beings of all types of birth. Egg, womb, moisture, transformation, with form, without form, with thought, without thought, not totally endowed with thought, and not totally lacking thought, who are undergoing all kinds of suffering. There are many forms of suffering, but in general, they can be said to fall into four categories. One, one person may undergo one kind of suffering. This is like a mute experiencing suffering of which he alone is aware, since he cannot express his misery. Hence the saying, like a mute tasting Huanglian. Huanglian is the most bitter kind of Chinese herbal medicine. Two, one person may undergo many kinds of suffering. A single individual may run into natural disasters or man-made calamities, experiencing the entire gamut of suffering. Three, many people may undergo one kind of suffering. For example, people in South Vietnam experienced the agonies of war, bloodshed, and political upheaval. Or there may be epidemics that wipe out entire populations at one time. Four, many people may undergo many kinds of suffering. Because there are many living beings, there are also many varieties of suffering. How many kinds of suffering are there? Basically, there's no way to count them all. In general, there are 84,000 kinds. So what should people do when they have to undergo all these terrible kinds of suffering? When they hear of Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva, they should recite his name single-mindedly. When you are suffering, don't forget Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva. Now, how many people in America have heard of the name of Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva? Those who have heard of it are very few. Think it over. Hearing just means understanding and being able to learn about something. You have studied the Sharangama Sutra and you know of Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva's perfect penetration of the ear organ and his 32 response bodies, all his inconceivable spiritual powers of self-mastery. The most important requirement is single-mindedness. You should have one mind, not two or three. If you are scattered, the effect of your recitation is diminished. Unless you turn to one, it's not efficacious. Now we have been working single-mindedly. Last week my disciples were setting up a Buddha altar. This week they were dumping loads of garbage until Goyo said, I am really tired. I don't want to work tomorrow. I said, one gains merit and virtue by doing work for the Buddha Dharma. He said, what does merit and virtue look like? 
I couldn't tell him what it looks like, so I said, If you want to work, go ahead. If you don't, just forget it. Actually, work like this has priceless merit and virtue, which is worth much more than any amount of gold, silver, or jewels. You shouldn't work and harbor doubts at the same time, thinking, Is there any merit and virtue in this? Just do the work and have faith. There is great merit and virtue in working for the Buddha Dharma, but it's not something that can be seen. Why not? Because it's too real. If it were false, you could see it. If it could be seen, thieves could steal it. Since it's invisible, it can never be taken away from you. It remains forever in your account of merit and virtue. Therefore, stay single minded. Don't have two or three minds about things. Guan means to contemplate, Shi means world, and Yin means sound. This Bodhisattva contemplates the sounds of all living beings who hear of or recite his name in all the worlds, whatever distance. Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva will immediately hear their voices and rescue them. These desperate living beings will be rescued from all torment. They will be happy. They will obtain genuine freedom and be without restraints or hang ups. Sutra If a person who upholds the name of Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva enters a great fire, The fire will not burn him, all because of this Bodhisattva's awesome spiritual power. Commentary Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva rescues living beings from the seven kinds of difficulty, the first of which is fire. Now, another hypothetical case is presented of A person who upholds the name of Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva. Uphold means to receive and maintain, and not to forget. In every thought, one recollects the name of Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva, reciting Namo Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva. If such a person enters a great fire, The fire will not burn him. However, this means that one recites the Bodhisattva's name during ordinary times. One can't wait until there's a disaster and then recite like crazy to make up for lost time. There's a saying In your free time, you never light incense, but when there's an emergency, You are on your knees before the Buddha. If you don't cultivate during ordinary circumstances but wait until an emergency to do so, it's not going to work. Sometimes there are cases when someone doesn't ordinarily recite, but Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva does save them. How does that happen? You ask. Everyone has his or her own set of causes and effects. In former lives, perhaps this person recited vigorously and performed many kinds of meritorious deeds. In this life, even though he doesn't recite, the power of his good roots from reciting in previous lives carries through and he is saved. This is an example of a distant cause. However, If you think you can wait and rely on your good roots, there is no guarantee. If you recite well in this life, I guarantee that in the future you'll be helped in an emergency. If you don't have the penetration of past lives, how do you know whether you recited in the past? 
If you have the heavenly eye or heavenly ear, you might know. But in order to be sure, it's still better to recite now. Once there was a man who wanted to go to Mount Puto in Nanhai to bow to Guangshir Yin Bodhisattva. He became a vegetarian three years before going to Mount Puto. But can you guess what happened? Just as he got on the boat, a neighbor came running up and said, "Our entire neighborhood is on fire." Then his relatives arrived and said, "Bad timing. Come back and save our home." I've been preparing for this pilgrimage for three years, and now I'm on the boat. If the house is supposed to burn, it will burn anyway, even if I get off the boat now. If Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva protects me, then it won't burn, and I don't need to get off the boat. I can go to the mountain. I would rather have my house burned down than not go bow to Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva. He didn't pay any attention to anything after that. He went to Mount Puto to bow to Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva, and when he returned to his own village. Every house in his neighborhood had burned down except for his. Everyone said, "Why didn't your house burn?" He replied, "I put everything down. I just went to bow to Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva. It was through the power of Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva." So, if a person enters a great fire, the fire will not burn him. All because of this Bodhisattva's awesome spiritual power. That's why he won't be burned. Sutra. If a person being tossed about in the great sea calls out the Bodhisattva's name, he will find a shallow place. Commentary. If a person is being tossed about in the great sea, that is, if he is accidentally thrown into the ocean, he can be saved by reciting Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva's name. Now you cannot do this on purpose, just to test it out. If you try to test Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva to see if He is efficacious or not? He most certainly won't be. You'll sink without a doubt. Why? Because you are testing him. You aren't a teacher, and he's not a student. So why do you want to test him? You don't believe Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva has such spiritual powers, and so you tested him out. It's as if you really didn't have faith in a friend. And so you tested him out to see if he is truly loyal. You leave some money lying around to see if he will steal it. That's because you really don't know whether he is your good friend or not. Why would you want to test Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva? Because you don't really have faith in him. But in testing him, you may lose your own life. Don't experiment with your life. If the person calls out the Bodhisattva's name, he will find a shallow place. You won't quite know how it happened, but suddenly you will be on the shore. It all happened due to the power of Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva. Sutra. If the hundreds of thousands of myriads of koti of beings who seek gold, silver, lapis lazuli, mother of pearl, carnelian, coral, amber, pearls, and so forth, enter the great sea, an evil wind may toss their boats into the territory of the Rakshasa Gos. But if among them there is even one person who calls out the name of Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva, they will all be saved from the difficulty of the Rakshasas. For this reason, he is called 
Gua Shi Yin. Commentary. Among the seven kinds of difficulties, this is the third. The virtue is something all people should consider the most important issue, because virtue is what differentiates people from animals. Without virtue, we are no different from animals. Also, virtue must be put into practice. If you don't do it, it's not there. In Manchuria, I had a very good friend. He was my good friend because he was on the same path as I was. I observed the filial piety by my mother's grave, and he had done the same by his mother's grave. He was called Filial San Yu. Before he began his filial practice, he had been a robber. He went everywhere, plundering households and kidnapping people. Once he was wounded in a fight. The wound festered and refused to heal for over half a year. Heals. I will never rob again. I will observe filial piety at the graves of my parents. After he had this thought, his wound was well in a few days, and he went to start his practice. Many strange things happened to him then. There isn't enough time to go into all of them in detail today. Once, seeking to stop the rain to aid his village, he cut off his flesh as an offering to heaven. While he was sitting beside his parents' graves, it started raining, and the rain continued for days and days. He thought, "All the crops will be flooded," and so he began to pray for the rain to stop. As a token of his sincerity, he said, "If the rain stops within three days, I shall cut off my flesh as an offering to heaven and the Buddha." After he made this vow, oddly enough, in two and a half days or so, the rain stopped. To carry out his vow, he stood before a Buddha image and cut off about one or two ounces of his flesh as an offering. Then he fainted from the shock and the pain. When he woke up again, the ground was covered with blood. The magistrate of Shuangcheng County happened to come by, seeing Filial Sun Yu lying in a pool of blood. The magistrate thought he was deranged, but when he found out the details of his offering, he said, "That's terrific." And was very impressed. Soon after this incident, a little bird came to visit Filial San Yi. It chirped in a very strange way. It said, "Do more virtue, do more virtue. Doing more virtue is good." In Chinese, 多做的多做的做的多好 It was telling people to do more good things. The more, the better. That's why I'm not afraid of working too hard. I work along with you all day, and then I lecture at night. I do so because I want to do more giving of Dharma. In America, the Buddha Dharma is extremely scarce, and so I'm not afraid of working hard to give you the Buddha Dharma. No matter how hard it is, I'm not going to go on strike. To say nothing of all of you, even if only one or two of you understand what I am saying, that will be enough. I will have found those who know my sound. Now there are so many of you who come every day to hear the sutra. You are all my most understanding Dharma friends, and so, even though it gets tiring. People get tired when they work. I go ahead and speak the Buddha Dharma for all of you. Sutra. Further, if a person who was about to be harmed calls out the name of Guanshuri and Bodhisattva, the knives and staves of the attackers will break into pieces, 
and he will be saved. Commentary. This is the difficulty of knives and staves. Further, if a person who was about to be harmed, on the verge of being murdered, calls out the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva, the knives and staves of the attackers will break into pieces. Just as they put the knife to your throat or the stick to your head, the weapon will split apart and be useless. Basically, a knife is stronger than your neck, but now your neck is stronger, and the knife breaks. Why does this happen? Because of the great, awesome power of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. This power causes your neck to be stronger than iron, so the knife breaks, and in this way. He, the person who is being attacked, will be saved from the difficulty of knives and staves. This is all because he recites the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. Is it that magical? You say. It is even more efficacious than that. All you have to do is sincerely and faithfully recite the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. Sutra. If yakshas and rakshasas enough to fill the three thousand great thousand world system come to torment a person, if they hear him call out the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. All those evil ghosts will not even be able to stare at that person with their evil eyes. How much the less harm him! Commentary. This is the difficulty of yakshas and rakshasas. If yakshas and rakshasas enough to fill the three thousand great thousand world system come to torment a person, yakshas are speedy ghosts. There are flying yakshas, space traveling yakshas, and earth bound yakshas. Yakshas are extremely fast. They can run faster than rockets. Rakshasas eat people's essence and energy. Both these types of ghosts specialize in harming people. The more you try to bring forth the body resolve, the madder they get, and the more they try to torment you. They think of all kinds of ways to obstruct you, so you can't cultivate. They cause you to retreat. You may bring forth the Bodhi resolve and be cultivating with great vigor, and then they'll come along and say, "What are you cultivating for? Why do you study the Buddha Dharma? Don't do it. It's plain useless." They can cause you to have doubt. They will bore into your mind and say, "Don't study the Buddha Dharma. Go somewhere else, where you can be free, where you can dance and listen to music whenever you want." The Buddha Dharma is just, "Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. You can't watch movies. Can't drink. Can't smoke. So many things you can't do." The more you study it, the more trouble you have. The yakshas and rakshasas cause you to think like that. You may want to leave the home life and be a monk, but these ghosts will say, "That's too bitter. You have to work all day long. You never get enough sleep, enough clothes to wear, or enough food to eat." 
You have to work your head off practically. Forget it. Why bother? Someone else might want to be a bhikshuni, but the yakshas and rakshasas come along and say, "Get married. You'll have a husband to keep your company, and you can do whatever you want." That's just the work of yakshas and rakshasas. They specialize in ruining your body resolve, your mind of cultivation. If they hear him call out the name of Guanshiyin Bodhisattva, all those evil ghosts will not even be able to stare at that person with their evil eyes. How much the less harm him! The yakshas and rakshasas will come along to torment you, but as soon as you recite the name of Guanshiyin Bodhisattva, you will emit light. This light will make it impossible for them to open their eyes and look at you. If they can't even open their eyes, how can they harm you? If you always recite the name of Guanshiyin Bodhisattva, you will receive help and protection. Sutra. If a person, whether guilty or not, who has been put in stocks or bound with chains, calls out the name of Guanshiyin Bodhisattva, his fetters will break apart, and he will immediately be freed. Commentary. If a person, whether guilty or not, who has been put in stocks or bound with chains, calls out the name of Guanshiyin Bodhisattva, his fetters will break apart. This is the difficulty of stocks and chains. A person gets arrested and locked up. Perhaps he's guilty. Or perhaps it's a case of mistaken identity or a frame-up. In any case, he is locked up. However, if he can recite homage to the greatly compassionate Guanshiyin Bodhisattva very sincerely, the fetters will fall off, and he will immediately be freed. I have seen many such responses. At Nanhua Monastery, there was a monk called Ti Hui. He was captured by the Japanese and locked up in jail, wearing handcuffs and chains. In jail, he recited Guanshiyin Bodhisattva's name all day long. Then one night, all of a sudden, all the chains and handcuffs fell off. The door opened by itself, and he ran away. There are many, many other such incidents, and so I know this is really true. Sutra. If bandits enough to fill the three thousand great thousand world system infest a dangerous road, on which a merchant chief in charge of costly jewels. Is leading a group of merchants, but among the merchants there is even a single person who says, "Good men, do not be afraid. You should all single-mindedly recite the name of Guanshiyin Bodhisattva. This Bodhisattva bestows fearlessness upon living beings. If you recite his name, you shall surely be saved from these robbers." And if, upon hearing that, the merchants all cry out together, "Namo Guanshiyin Bodhisattva," then they will immediately be saved because they recited his name. Commentary: If bandits enough to fill the three thousand great thousand world system. Infest a dangerous road. These are malicious and hateful robbers. 
Because they have grudges against people from former lives, in this life they become bandits and rob other people. Suppose these bandits lie await on a perilous road, on which a merchant chief in charge of costly jewels is leading a group of merchants. Naturally, the bandits are going to want to rob their jewels. But if among the merchants there is even a single person who says, "Good men, do not be afraid," friends, brothers, colleagues. You should all single-mindedly recite the name of Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva. Use one mind, not two, to recite Guan Yin Bodhisattva's name. This Bodhisattva bestows fearlessness upon living beings. If you recite his name, you shall surely be saved from these robbers. And if, upon hearing that, the merchants all cry out together, "Namo Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva," homage to the Bodhisattva who contemplates the sounds of the world, then they will immediately be saved from their predicament because they recited his name. This Dharma door is especially efficacious. Everyone should believe in it. Don't have intention. The awesome spiritual power of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Guanshuyin is as lofty and sublime as that. Commentary. Shakyamuni Buddha, having explained the above doctrine, now calls out. Inexhaustible intention. The awesome spiritual power of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Guanshuyin is as lofty and sublime as that. The power of his awesome virtue and spiritual penetrations is great, supreme, and magnificent. What are Mahasattvas? Mahasattvas are bodhisattvas, and bodhisattvas can be mahasattvas. Regular bodhisattvas refer to young bodhisattvas, but mahasattvas refer to old bodhisattvas. They are the senior ones. By way of analogy, ordinary bodhisattvas are like compact cars; they can't carry too many people. Mahasattvas are like big vans that can carry a lot of people. Sutra. If living beings who have much sexual desire constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva, they will be separated from desire. If those who have much hatred. Constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva. They will be separated from hatred. If those who are very stupid, constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva, they will be separated from stupidity. Commentary. If living beings who have much sexual desire, some people study the Buddha Dharma on one hand and entertain lustful desire on the other. The more they study the Dharma, the stronger their desire is. They think about sex all day long until their desire thoughts are like flowing water. This is the worst of thoughts. And the worst kind of behavior, a very bad sign. What should they do? 
They don't have to get nervous about it. They should just constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva. It's not good enough just to recite it. You must also be reverent. You should bow more to Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva. Bowing to the Buddhas is just paying great reverence to the Buddhas. Most people don't understand what bowing to the Buddhas means. Adherents of other religions say it's just bowing to wooden idols. Blind people speak blindly. They don't have eyes. They can't see the Buddha's light, and so they say it's idol worship. But bowing to the Buddhas represents the reverence in our hearts. In order to respect the triple jewel, we must certainly bow to the Buddhas. Take care not to be arrogant and think, "I'm so great. I'm greater than the Buddhas. Why should I bow to them?" That's a mistake. If people always bow and recite Guan Yin Bodhisattva's name, they will be separated from desire. It's gone. You say, but I like sexual desire. What am I going to do without it? If you like it, you don't have to recite Guan Yin Bodhisattva's name. That's all. It's simple enough. If you don't want your sexual desire, you can get rid of it. If you want to keep it, you don't have to get rid of it. Either way, it's up to you. If there are those who have much hatred, they should recite Guan Yin Bodhisattva's name. Hatred manifests as overt anger. Anger is a kind of affliction, and affliction is just ignorance. Hatred is like fire. It is said, one spark of fire can burn up a forest of merit and virtue. Therefore, there is an ancient saying that the fire would gathered in a thousand days goes up in a blaze started by a single spark. You can gather firewood for a thousand days. A long time, but one little match can burn it all up. This describes how ordinarily we may try to do good and virtuous deeds. We may do this over a long period of time, but then we get mad, and the fire of ignorance rises. All that merit and virtue is burned right off. If you have a big temper. You'll produce ignorance whenever you open your mouth. What kind of people like to get mad? Asuras. Everyone has come down a particular path. Some have come down the Buddha path. Some have come down the path of immortals. Others have come down the path of humans, asuras, animals, or ghosts. Those who have come down the Buddha path are, for the most part, compassionate. Those who have come down the ghost path are, for the most part, cheap and lowly. They never take a loss. They are really sneaky and slimy, not reliable. Unreliable people are said to be ghostly. Those from the path of humans have affinities with everyone. Those from the animal path are insatiably greedy for everything. The more, the better. Asuras like to get angry. Those from the immortal path like to be pure and carefree. So now we are talking about asuras. Have you noticed how there are some people who are just miserable all the time? 
they are always on the verge of blowing their tops. They are just Asuras. They have Asura natures. Can they change? Yes. How? The Dharma Flower Sutra tells us in detail. All you have to do is constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. This means reciting all the time, without ever stopping. Recite constantly and be reverent by going to temples and bowing to Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. But you can't just bow today and not tomorrow, or bow in the morning and not bow at night. If you have no work to do, then spend your time bowing and reciting. Gradually, they will be separated from hatred. Your temper will vanish. You won't know quite how it happened, but strangely enough, your temper will have disappeared. It's just that mysterious. You don't know about this, but I've had personal experience, and I know. I used to have a terrible temper. I used to hit and scold people. When I was very young, twelve or so, I liked to fight with others. No matter how big a person was, he had to listen to my orders, or I would clobber him until he submitted. That's just an Asura nature. Later, when I studied the Buddha Dharma, I realized the anger was wrong, and I changed. I always recited the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. So now, sometimes even when my own disciples bully me, I still don't get angry. My disciples may get mad at me, but I practice patience and endure it. I know that eventually they will understand that they are wrong. Before I used to get mad at people, and now my disciples get mad at me. Which ones? You ask. You know who you are. I say. Before I got mad at others, now others get mad at me. This is just retribution. I have received these bad disciples who bully their good teacher. But the good teacher doesn't get angry anymore. I don't know where my temper went, but I am not going to look for it. If I find it again, it'll be even worse. Those who are very stupid. We have already discussed greed and hatred. Now we'll discuss stupidity. These are the three poisons. They poison our Buddha natures and put them to sleep. Why haven't we awakened yet? Why is it that we live as if drunk and die in a dream? It's all because of the three poisons. The primary form of greed is sexual desire. Sexual desire is extremely harmful to people's natures. But most people think it's very enjoyable, and so they engage in all kinds of impure conduct. Day by day, the original Buddha nature becomes covered with filth, so that its light does not manifest. This is all because of greed for sex. Hatred is the same way. Now we are talking about stupidity. What's that? Stupidity just means that you feel you aren't stupid. That's stupid. A person may think he is intelligent and wise, but then you ask him, "Where did you come from? Where are you going to in the future?" And he can't answer. He doesn't know where he came from or where he's going, and yet he says he's intelligent. He won't admit that he is stupid. In this world, everyone is concerned about such petty affairs as fame and profit. 
people toil for fame and profit all day long. They hurt each other, kill each other, and cause mayhem, all just for profit. If you put all the people in the world together, how many would there be? Two. One who seeks fame, and one who seeks profit. Fame and profit turn people entirely upside down. They don't wake up. From birth to death, they fight and struggle. Some seek to get elected to office. Others seek to get rich. Some run after the opposite sex or some other kind of happiness. But this happiness fades, and at the time of death, people have no idea where they are going, and yet they still think they are incredible geniuses with great wisdom. I'm the smartest. I have the most wisdom. I was first in my class every year. I'm ahead of everyone else in everything. But how is it really? As long as you haven't recognized your own original face, no matter how smart you are, yours is a false intelligence. People with genuine wisdom won't think they are wise. Will they think they're stupid then? You ask. No, they won't think they're either stupid or wise. On the outside, they appear to be pretty much the same as everyone else, but their thinking and attitude will be clear. They are clear about the fact that everything is like an illusion, like a bubble, a shadow, a dewdrop, or a flash of lightning. Knowing that everything is like a dream, they won't be greedy for glory, wealth. Or position, knowing that everything is an illusion, they won't be greedy for sex, power, or profit. It's all impermanent, all of it. And so the Vajra Sutra says, all conditioned dharmas are like a dream, a bubble, or a shadow. What are conditioned dharmas? They are all those things with marks, all the things we perceive. All are like illusions, dreams, or bubbles. Would you say a bubble in the ocean is real? If you say it's real, it will soon pop and disappear. If you say it's false, it's still there. But although it's there, it has no real substance. A shadow is also false. It's like dew in the morning. It's there, but as soon as the sun shines on it, it's gone. And a lightning flash appears for just an instant. If you can look upon everything as being like a dream, an illusion, a bubble, a shadow, dew, or a lightning flash. Then what attachments could there be? None. Without attachments, you'll have genuine understanding. You won't let your thinking wander as it will to the north, east, south, or west. You will put down deluded thinking and involvement with the dust of the world. Having put it all down, you couldn't avoid becoming a Buddha if you tried. You would have wisdom whether you wanted it or not. You would be naturally wise. When you don't have wisdom, you may think, "I'm pretty wise." But once you have true wisdom, you'll think, "Oh, originally this was mine all the time. It didn't come from outside." At that time, you won't be arrogant. You won't think. See me, I'm the smartest one around. I'm the prettiest one around. 
I'm the most talented, incredible, unusual person around. If you think like that, you're attached to appearances. Appearances just means your stinking skin bag. The dream, illusion, bubble, shadow, dewdrop, and lightning flash. All day long, you wear your nice clothes, eat your fancy food, live in your fine house, and enjoy your amusements. You do all of this for your body, but when the time comes to die, your body will pay no attention to you. It won't help you out at all. Besides, in order to satisfy their stinking skin bags, people are busy all day long smoking, drinking, stuffing themselves with food, trying to fill that bottomless pit. You can't fill a bottomless pit; it all keeps leaking out. The more it leaks, the more you fill it. The more you fill it, the more it leaks. It certainly keeps you busy. Why do I eat one meal a day? Because three meals a day are just too much trouble. Most people think that eating fine food is a real pleasure. I think it's a lot of trouble. If you overeat, your stomach hurts. If you don't eat enough, your greed isn't satisfied. You think. Mmm, that was good. I'd like to have a little bit more. If you don't eat such good food, you won't be so greedy, and it's a lot easier on your stomach. It's just a lot of trouble, and it all comes about because of stupidity. Being stupid, one seeks after pleasure, wealth, enjoyment, and fun with the opposite sex. It's all upside down. You can be as greedy as you want, and then what? When the time comes, you're still going to die. When the time comes to die, you won't have control over the situation at all. Isn't that stupid? Now, being so stupid, what should people do? We should rely upon the method given in the Dharma Flower Sutra. If people constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva, they will be separated from stupidity. Recite the name of Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva, and your stupidity will disappear as your wisdom comes forth. If you know you are stupid, you have recognized yourself. You have to have some wisdom to be able to realize that you're stupid. People without wisdom won't have any idea that they're stupid. The farther they run, the farther off they stray. And as if being stupid wasn't bad enough, people insist on doubling their stupidity by thinking they're intelligent. How do we get rid of our stupidity? We must constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva. This is the most wonderful and efficacious method. It's a money-back guarantee, wonderful beyond words. Speaking of stupidity and wisdom, what is stupidity? What is wisdom? I'll tell you something you won't believe. Stupidity is wisdom. Wisdom is stupidity. Why do I say that? Take a look at the Heart Sutra. Form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. Form itself is emptiness. Emptiness itself is form. True form comes from true emptiness. 
true emptiness comes from true form. They are two, and yet not two. If you know how to use it, it's wisdom. If you can't use it, it's stupidity. Stupidity and wisdom are not two. It just depends on whether or not you can use it. If you can use it, stupidity turns to wisdom. If you can't use it, wisdom turns to stupidity. They are two, and yet not two. If you obtain genuine wisdom, you will know. Oh, originally it was like an exhaustible intention. Guanxiu Yin Bodhisattva has great awesome spiritual power such as these and confers great benefits. Therefore, living beings should always be mindful of him. Commentary Shakyamuni Buddha calls out, Inexhaustible Intention Guanxiu Yin Bodhisattva has great awesome spiritual power such as these. He is able to rescue us from the seven difficulties and the three poisons. And he confers great benefits. There are many, many ways in which he benefits living beings with his spiritual powers. Therefore, living beings should always be mindful of him. Living beings should always keep his name in mind. The text makes it very clear here. It's not good enough just to recite with your mouth. You must keep his name in your mind. Your mouth doesn't necessarily have to recite, but you must keep his name in your thoughts. Sutra If women who seek sons bow and make offerings to Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva, they will give birth to blessed, virtuous, and wise sons. If they seek daughters, they will give birth to upright and handsome daughters who have planted the roots of virtue in previous lives and who are regarded and respected by all. Commentary If women who seek sons bow and make offerings of fruit, flowers, and so forth. To Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva, they will give birth to blessed, virtuous, and wise sons. If they seek sons, they will have sons. If they seek daughters, they will give birth to upright and handsome daughters. Their noses will look like noses. Their eyes will look like eyes. Their ears will look like ears. And their lips will look like lips. Well, could somebody have eyes that don't look like eyes? You ask. Some people have triangular eyes. In China we say these eyes are Zhangshu Gui eyes. Zhang Shigui was a treacherous official during the Tang Dynasty in China. He had a very bad character and cheated everyone. And he had three cornered eyes. Most people's eyes just go straight across, but his were triangular. So you should remember, if you become friends with such people, then you will have a hard time. Zhangshu Gui eyes make a person very hard to get along with. Can a nose not look like a nose? You ask. Sometimes people have a nose that sticks in instead of out, or it looks as if someone had bit it off. 
Some people's ears look like a little mouse's ears, really tiny. Some have ears as long as a rabbit's. Is that good looking? If one's earlobes hang down like the Buddha's, they can be said to be good ears. But if one's ears are long in the other direction, that is, they stick way up in the air, then they don't even look like ears, except maybe rabbit's ears. Some people's lips don't look like lips. Some people have their noses and mouths stuck right together with their ears. They don't even look human. Even dogs aren't that ugly and weird. Some people like dogs and they want to look like dogs too. But these people with their noses, mouths and ears all grown together don't even look as good as dogs. They may have hair lips or be bow-legged. If a daughter looked like that, no one would like it because she wouldn't be proper and attractive. In general, women who are deformed have a hard time getting married or even getting a boyfriend. Everyone is afraid of them. However, upright and handsome daughters are those who have planted roots of virtue in previous lives. Why are they upright and beautiful? Beautiful people in their former lives made offerings of flowers and other things to the Buddhas. During the summer session, one of my disciples said, No wonder all the women are making offerings of flowers to the Buddha. They want to be beautiful. These attractive daughters being discussed are ones who are regarded and respected by all. Everyone is fond of them. Sutra Inexhaustible Intention Guanxiyin Bodhisattva has powers such as these. If there are living beings who reverently bow to Guanxiyin Bodhisattva, they will be blessed and their efforts will not be in vain. Commentary Having talked about these two kinds of seeking, seeking for a son, and seeking for a daughter, and also having talked about the seven kinds of difficulties and the three poisons, the Buddha now calls out, Inexhaustible intention, Vashir Yambodhi Sattva has powers such as these, as just described above. If there are living beings who reverently bow to Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva, they will be blessed and their efforts will not be in vain. If they can very respectfully pay homage to Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva, they will certainly be rewarded with blessings. Sutra Therefore, living beings should all receive and uphold the name of Guanshiryan Bodhisattva. Commentary Therefore, living beings should all receive and uphold the name of Guanshiryan Bodhisattva. Receive and uphold means to recite to keep the name of Guanshiryan Bodhisattva always in mind. If you can recite the name of Guanshiryan Bodhisattva, there is inconceivable power there. Sutra Inexhaustible Intention If a person were to receive and uphold the names of Bodhisattvas, in number as the grains of sand in sixty-two koti 
of Ganges rivers and in addition were to exhaustively make offerings to them of food, drink, clothing, bedding, and medicine, what do you think? Would that good man's or good woman's merit and virtue be great or not? Inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva replied, Very great, world-honored one. The Buddha said, If another person were to receive and uphold the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva and bow and make offerings but once, that person's blessings would be equal to and not different from the other person's. They could not be exhausted in hundreds of thousands of myriads of koti of eons. Commentary Inexhaustible Intention If a person were to receive and uphold the names of bodhisattvas in number as the grains of sand in 62 koti of Ganges rivers, Receive and uphold means reciting the name not of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva, but of other Bodhisattvas, an incredible number of them. And not only that, if the person, in addition, were to exhaustively make offerings to them of food, drink, clothing, bedding, and medicine, what do you think? Suppose this person throughout his entire life presents those four kinds of offerings to the Triple Jewel. Would that good man's or good woman's merit and virtue be great or not? Inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva replied, very great, world-honored one. The Buddha said, If another person were to receive and uphold the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva and bow and make offerings but once, he doesn't have to make offerings for his entire life. He only has to do it once, just for a moment. Then, that person's blessings would be equal to and not different from the other person's. His blessings wouldn't differ from those gained by the first person who made offerings to bodhisattvas as many as the sands of 62 koti of Ganges rivers. They could not be exhausted in hundreds of thousands of myriads of koti of eons. Sutra Inexhaustible intention One who receives and upholds the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva obtains the benefit of blessings and virtues as limitless and boundless as those. Commentary Inexhaustible Intention Shakyamuni Buddha continues, One who receives and upholds and recites the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva obtains the benefits of blessings and virtues as limitless and boundless as those. Sutra Inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva said to the Buddha, World Honored One, how does Guanshuyin Bodhisattva roam through this Saha world? How does he speak the Dharma for living beings? How does he carry out this work with the power of expedience? Commentary 
inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva said to the Buddha, World Honored One, how does Guanshuryan Bodhisattva roam through this Saha world? Saha is a Sanskrit word which means worthy of being endured. We say worthy because although this world is filled with suffering, living beings find it worthy of being endured. It's not easy to bear this pain. There is so much suffering in the Saha world. How can Guashiryan Bodhisattva teach and transform living beings here? How does he speak the Dharma for living beings? How does he carry out this work with the power of expedience? Sutra The Buddha told inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva, Good man, if living beings in this land must be saved by means of someone in the body of a Buddha, Guanshuryan Bodhisattva will manifest in the body of a Buddha and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a Pratyeka Buddha, he will manifest in the body of a Pratyeka Buddha and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a hearer, he will manifest in the body of a hearer and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of the Brahma king, he will manifest in the body of the Brahma king and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of Chakra, he will manifest in the body of Chakra and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of the God of Sovereignty, he will manifest in the body of the God of Sovereignty and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of the Great God of Sovereignty, he will manifest in the body of the Great God of Sovereignty and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a great heavenly general, he will manifest in the body of a great heavenly general and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of Vaishravana, he will manifest in the body of Vaishravana and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a minor king, he will manifest in the body of a minor king and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of an elder, he will manifest in the body of an elder and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a layman, he will manifest in the body of a layman and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a minister of state, he will manifest in the body of a minister of state and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a Brahman, he will manifest in the body of a Brahman and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a bhikshu, bhikshuni, upasaka or upasika, he will manifest in the body of a bhikshu, bhikshuni, upasaka or upasika and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of the wife of an elder, a layman, of a minister of state or of a brahman, he will manifest in a wife's body and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a pure youth or a pure maiden, he will manifest in the body of a pure youth or a pure maiden and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a heavenly dragon, Yaksha, Gandharva, Ashura, Garuda, Kinara, Mohoraga, human or non-human and so forth, he will manifest in such a body and speak Dharma for them. 
if they must be saved by someone in the body of a Vajra-wielding spirit. He will manifest in the body of a Vajra-wielding spirit and speak Dharma for them. Sutra Further, if a person who was about to be harmed calls out the name of Guashriyam Bodhisattva, the knives and staves of the attackers will break into pieces and he will be saved. Commentary This is the difficulty of knives and staves. Further, if a person who was about to be harmed on the verge of being murdered calls out the name of Guanshiryam Bodhisattva, the knives and staves of the attackers will break into pieces Just as they put the knife to your throat or the stick to your head, the weapon will split apart and be useless. Basically, a knife is stronger than your neck, but now your neck is stronger and the knife breaks. Why does this happen? Because of the great awesome power of Guanshiryam Bodhisattva. This power causes your neck to be stronger than iron, so the knife breaks. And, in this way, he, the person who is being attacked, will be saved from the difficulty of knives and staves. This is all because he recites the name of Guanshiryam Bodhisattva. Is it that magical? You say. It is even more efficacious than that. All you have to do is sincerely and faithfully recite the name of Guanshiryan Bodhisattva. Sutra If yakshas and rakshasas enough to fill the three thousand great thousand world system come to torment a person, if they hear him call out the name of Guashiryan Bodhisattva, all those evil ghosts will not even be able to stare at that person with their evil eyes, how much the less harm him. Commentary This is the difficulty of yakshas and rakshashas. If yakshas and rakshashas enough to fill the three thousand great thousand world system come to torment a person. Yakshas are speedy ghosts. There are flying yakshas space-traveling yakshas, and earth-bound yakshas. Yakshas are extremely fast. They can run faster than rockets. Rakshashas eat people's essence and energy. Both these types of ghosts specialize in harming people. The more you try to bring forth the body resolve, the matter they get and the more they try to torment you. They think of all kinds of ways to obstruct you so you can't cultivate. They cause you to retreat. You may bring forth a bow to resolve and be cultivating with great vigor, and then they'll come along and say, What are you cultivating for? Why do you study the Buddha Dharma? Don't do it. It's plain useless. They can cause you to have doubts. They will bore into your mind and say, Don't study the Buddha Dharma. Go somewhere else, where you can be free, where you can dance and listen to music whenever you want. The Buddha Dharma is just, Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. You can't watch movies, can't drink, can't smoke. 
so many things you can't do. The more you study it, the more trouble you have. The yakshas and rakshasas cause you to think like that. You may want to leave the home life and be a monk, but these ghosts will say, That's too bitter. You have to work all day long. You never get enough sleep, enough clothes to wear, or enough food to eat. You have to work your head off practically. Forget it. Why bother? Someone else might want to be a bhikshuni, but the yakshas and rakshasas come along and say, Get married. You'll have a husband to keep your company, and you can do whatever you want. That's just the work of yakshas and rakshasas. They specialize in ruining your body resolve, your mind of cultivation. If they hear him call out the name of Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva, all those evil ghosts will not even be able to stare at that person with their evil eyes, how much the less harm him. The yakshas and rakshasas will come along to torment you, but as soon as you recite the name of Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva, you will emit light. This light will make it impossible for them to open their eyes and look at you. If they can't even open their eyes, how can they harm you? If you always recite the name of Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva, you will receive help and protection. Sutra If a person, whether guilty or not, who has been put in stocks or bound with chains, calls out the name of Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva. His fetters will break apart and he will immediately be freed. Commentary If a person, whether guilty or not, who has been put in stocks or bound with chains, calls out the name of Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva, his fetters will break apart. This is the difficulty of stocks and chains. A person gets arrested and locked up. Perhaps he's guilty, or perhaps it's a case of mistaken identity or a frame-up. In any case, he is locked up. However, if he can recite... Homage to the greatly compassionate Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva. Very sincerely, the fetters will fall off, and he will immediately be freed. I have seen many such responses. At Nanhua Monastery, there was a monk called Ti Hui. He was captured by the Japanese and locked up in jail, wearing handcuffs and chains. In jail, he recited Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva's name all day long. Then, one night, all of a sudden, all the chains and handcuffs fell off. The door opened by itself and he ran away. There are many, many other such incidents, and so I know this is really true. Sutra If bandits enough to fill the three thousand great thousand world system infest a dangerous road on which a merchant chief in charge of costly jewels is leading a group of merchants but among the merchants there is even a single person who says Good men, do not be afraid you should all single-mindedly recite the name of Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva. This Bodhisattva bestows fearlessness upon living beings. If you recite his name, you shall surely be saved from these robbers. And if, upon hearing that, the merchants all cry out together, 
Namo Guashir Yin Bodhisattva, then they will immediately be saved because they recited his name. Commentary If bandits enough to fill the three thousand great thousand world system infest a dangerous road, these are malicious and hateful robbers. Because they have grudges against people from former lives, in this life they become bandits and rob other people. Suppose these bandits lie await on a perilous road, on which a merchant chief in charge of costly jewels is leading a group of merchants, Naturally, the bandits are going to want to rob their jewels. But if among the merchants there is even a single person who says, Good men, do not be afraid. Friends, brothers, colleagues, you should all single-mindedly recite the name of Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva. Use one mind, not two, to recite Guan Yin Bodhisattva's name. This Bodhisattva bestows fearlessness upon living beings. If you recite his name, you shall surely be saved from these robbers. And if, upon hearing that, the merchants all cry out together, Namo Guanshu Yin Bodhisattva, homage to the Bodhisattva who contemplates the sounds of the world, then they will immediately be saved from their predicament because they recited his name. This Dharma door is especially efficacious. Everyone should believe in it. Don't have doubt. Inexhaustible intention. The awesome spiritual power of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Guashur Yin is as lofty and sublime as that. Commentary Shakyamuni Buddha, having explained the above doctrine, now calls out, Inexhaustible intention, the awesome spiritual power of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Guashur Yin is as lofty and sublime as that. The power of his awesome virtue and spiritual penetrations is great, supreme, and magnificent. What are Mahasattvas? Mahasattvas are Bodhisattvas, and Bodhisattvas can be Mahasattvas. Regular Bodhisattvas refer to young Bodhisattvas, but Mahasattvas refer to old Bodhisattvas. They are the senior ones. By way of analogy, Ordinary bodhisattvas are like compact cars. They can't carry too many people. Mahasattvas are like big vans that can carry a lot of people. Sutra If living beings who have much sexual desire constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshur Yin Bodhisattva, they will be separated from desire. If those who have much hatred constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshur Yin Bodhisattva, they will be separated from hatred. If those who are very stupid constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshur Yin Bodhisattva, they will be separated from stupidity. Commentary 
if living beings who have much sexual desire. Some people study the Buddha Dharma on one hand and entertain lustful desire on the other. The more they study the Dharma, the stronger their desire is. They think about sex all day long until their desire thoughts are like flowing water. This is the worst of thoughts and the worst kind of behavior, a very bad sign. What should they do? They don't have to get nervous about it. They should just constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. It's not good enough just to recite it. You must also be reverent. You should bow more to Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. Bowing to the Buddhas is just paying great reverence to the Buddhas. Most people don't understand what bowing to the Buddhas means. Adherents of other religions say it's just bowing to wooden idols. Blind people speak blindly. They don't have eyes. They can't see the Buddha's light, and so they say it's idol worship. But bowing to the Buddhas represents the reverence in our hearts. In order to respect the Triple Jewel, we must certainly bow to the Buddhas. Take care not to be arrogant and think, "I'm so great." I'm greater than the Buddhas. Why should I bow to them? That's a mistake. If people always bow and recite Guanyin Bodhisattva's name, they will be separated from desire. It's gone. You say, but I like sexual desire. What am I going to do without it? If you like it, you don't have to recite Guanyin Bodhisattva's name. That's all. It's simple enough. If you don't want your sexual desire, you can get rid of it. If you want to keep it, you don't have to get rid of it. Either way, it's up to you. If there are those who have much hatred. They should recite Guanyin Bodhisattva's name. Hatred manifests as overt anger. Anger is a kind of affliction, and affliction is just ignorance. Hatred is like fire. It is said, one spark of fire can burn up a forest of merit and virtue. Therefore, there is an ancient saying that the fire would gathered in a thousand days goes up in a blaze started by a single spark. You can gather firewood for a thousand days, a long time, but one little match can burn it all up. This describes how ordinarily we may try to do good and virtuous deeds. We may do this over a long period of time, but then we get mad, and the fire of ignorance rises. All that merit and virtue is burned right off. If you have a big temper, you'll produce ignorance whenever you open your mouth. What kind of people like to get mad? Asuras. Everyone has come down a particular path. Some have come down the Buddha path. Some have come down the path of immortals. Others have come down the path of humans, asuras, animals, or ghosts. Those who have come down the Buddha path are, for the most part, compassionate. Those who have come down the ghost path are, for the most part, cheap and lowly. They never take a loss. They are really sneaky and slimy, not reliable. Unreliable people are said to be ghostly. 
Those from the path of humans have affinities with everyone. Those from the animal path are insatiably greedy for everything. The more, the better. Asuras like to get angry. Those from the immortal path like to be pure and carefree. So now we are talking about asuras. Have you noticed how there are some people who are just miserable all the time? They are always on the verge of blowing their tops. They are just asuras. They have asura natures. Can they change? Yes. How? The Dharma Flower Sutra tells us in detail. All you have to do is constantly and reverently recite the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. This means reciting all the time, without ever stopping. Recite constantly and be reverent by going to temples and bowing to Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. But you can't just bow today and not tomorrow, or bow in the morning and not bow at night. If you have no work to do, then spend your time bowing and reciting. Gradually, they will be separated from hatred. Your temper will vanish. You won't know quite how it happened, but strangely enough, your temper will have disappeared. It's just that mysterious. You don't know about this, but I've had personal experience, and I know. I used to have a terrible temper. I used to hit and scold people. When I was very young, twelve or so, I liked to fight with others. No matter how big a person was, he had to listen to my orders, or I would clobber him until he submitted. That's just an asura nature. Later, when I studied the Buddha Dharma, I realized the anger was wrong, and I changed. I always recited the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. So now, sometimes even when my own disciples bully me, I still don't get angry. My disciples may get mad at me, but I practice patience and endure it. I know that eventually they will understand that they are wrong. Before I used to get mad at people, and now my disciples get mad at me. Which ones? You ask. You know who you are. I say. Before I got mad at others, now others get mad at me. This is just retribution. I have received these bad disciples who bully their good teacher, but the good teacher doesn't get angry anymore. I don't know where my temper went, but I am not going to look for it. If I find it again, it'll be even worse. If those who are very stupid, we have already discussed greed and hatred. Now we'll discuss stupidity. These are the three poisons. They poison our Buddha natures and put them to sleep. Why haven't we awakened yet? Why is it that we live as if drunk and die in a dream? It's all because of the three poisons. The primary form of greed is sexual desire. Sexual desire is extremely harmful to people's natures, but most people think it's very enjoyable, and so they engage in all kinds of impure conduct. Day by day, the original Buddha nature becomes covered with filth, so that its light does not manifest. This is all because of greed for sex. Hatred is the same way. Now we are talking about stupidity. What's that? Stupidity just means that you feel you aren't stupid. That's stupid. 
A person may think he is intelligent and wise, but then you ask him, Where did you come from? Where are you going to in the future? And he can't answer. He doesn't know where he came from or where he's going, and yet he says he's intelligent. He won't admit that he is stupid. In this world, everyone is concerned about such petty affairs as fame and profit. People toil for fame and profit all day long. They hurt each other, kill each other, and cause mayhem, all just for profit. If you put all the people in the world together, how many would there be? Two. One who seeks fame and one who seeks profit. Fame and profit turn people entirely upside down. They don't wake up. From birth to death, they fight and struggle. Some seek to get elected to office, others seek to get rich. Some run after the opposite sex or some other kind of happiness. But this happiness fades, and at the time of death, people have no idea where they are going. And yet they still think they are incredible geniuses with great wisdom. I'm the smartest. I have the most wisdom. I was first in my class every year. I'm ahead of everyone else in everything. But how is it really? As long as you haven't recognized your own original face, no matter how smart you are, yours is a false intelligence. People with genuine wisdom won't think they are wise. Will they think they're stupid then? You ask. No. They won't think they're either stupid or wise. On the outside, they appear to be pretty much the same as everyone else, but their thinking and attitude will be clear. They are clear about the fact that everything is like an illusion, like a bubble, a shadow, a dewdrop, or a flash of lightning. Knowing that everything is like a dream. They won't be greedy for glory, wealth, or position. Knowing that everything is an illusion, they won't be greedy for sex, power, or profit. It's all impermanent, all of it. And so the Vajra Sutra says, "All conditioned dharmas are like a dream, a bubble, or a shadow." What are conditioned dharmas? They are all those things with marks, all the things we perceive. All are like illusions, dreams, or bubbles. Would you say a bubble in the ocean is real? If you say it's real, it will soon pop and disappear. If you say it's false, it's still there. But although it's there, it has no real substance. A shadow is also false. It's like dew in the morning. It's there, but as soon as the sun shines on it, it's gone. And a lightning flash appears for just an instant. If you can look upon everything as being like a dream, an illusion, a bubble. A shadow, dew, or a lightning flash, then what attachments could there be? None. Without attachments, you'll have genuine understanding. You won't let your thinking wander as it will to the north, east, south, or west. You will put down deluded thinking and involvement with the dust of the world. Having put it all down, you couldn't avoid becoming a Buddha if you tried. You would have wisdom whether you wanted it or not. You would be naturally wise. 
When you don't have wisdom, you may think, "I'm pretty wise." But once you have true wisdom, you'll think, "Oh, originally this was mine all the time. It didn't come from outside." At that time, you won't be arrogant. You won't think. See me, I'm the smartest one around. I'm the prettiest one around. I'm the most talented, incredible, unusual person around. If you think like that, you're attached to appearances. Appearances just mean. Your stinking skin bag, the dream, illusion, bubble, shadow, dewdrop, and lightning flash. All day long you wear your nice clothes, eat your fancy food, live in your fine house, and enjoy your amusements. You do all of this for your body. But when the time comes to die, your body will pay no attention to you. It won't help you out at all. Besides, in order to satisfy their stinking skin bags, people are busy all day long, smoking, drinking, stuffing themselves with food, trying to fill that bottomless pit. You can't fill a bottomless pit. It all keeps leaking out. The more it leaks, the more you fill it. The more you fill it, the more it leaks. It certainly keeps you busy. Why do I eat one meal a day? Because three meals a day are just too much trouble. Most people think that eating fine food is a real pleasure. I think it's a lot of trouble. If you overeat, your stomach hurts. If you don't eat enough, your greed isn't satisfied. You think, "Hmm, that was good. I'd like to have a little bit more." If you don't eat such good food, you won't be so greedy, and it's a lot easier on your stomach. It's just a lot of trouble, and it all comes about because of stupidity. Being stupid, one seeks after pleasure, wealth, enjoyment, and fun with the opposite sex. It's all upside down. You can be as greedy as you want, and then what? When the time comes, you're still going to die. When the time comes to die, you won't have control over the situation at all. Isn't that stupid? Now, being so stupid, what should people do? We should rely upon the method given in the Dharma Flower Sutra. If people constantly and reverently recite the name of Guan Shu Yin Bodhisattva. They will be separated from stupidity. Recite the name of Guan Shu Yin Bodhisattva, and your stupidity will disappear as your wisdom comes forth. If you know you are stupid, you have recognized yourself. You have to have some wisdom to be able to realize that you are stupid. People without wisdom won't have any idea that they're stupid. The farther they run, the farther off they stray. And as if being stupid wasn't bad enough, people insist on doubling their stupidity by thinking they're intelligent. How do we get rid of our stupidity? We must constantly and reverently recite the name of Guan Shu Yin Bodhisattva. This is the most wonderful and efficacious method. It's a money-back guarantee, wonderful beyond words. Speaking of stupidity and wisdom, what is stupidity? What is wisdom? I'll tell you something you won't believe. Stupidity is wisdom. Wisdom 
is stupidity. Why do I say that? Take a look at the Heart Sutra. Form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. Form itself is emptiness. Emptiness itself is form. True form comes from true emptiness. True emptiness comes from true form. They are two, and yet not two. If you know how to use it, it's wisdom. If you can't use it, it's stupidity. Stupidity and wisdom are not two. It just depends on whether or not you can use it. If you can use it, stupidity turns to wisdom. If you can't use it, wisdom turns to stupidity. They are two, and yet not two. If you obtain genuine wisdom, you will know. Oh, originally it was like this, and you won't be upside down. Sutra. Inexhaustible intention. Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva has great, awesome spiritual power such as these, and confers great benefits. Therefore, living beings should always be mindful of him. Commentary: Shakyamuni Buddha calls out, "Inexhaustible intention." Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva has great, awesome spiritual powers such as these. He is able to rescue us from the seven difficulties and the three poisons, and he confers great benefits. There are many, many ways in which he benefits living beings with his spiritual powers. Therefore, living beings should always be mindful of him. Living being should always keep his name in mind. The text makes it very clear here. It's not good enough just to recite with your mouth. You must keep his name in your mind. Your mouth doesn't necessarily have to recite, but you must keep his name in your thoughts. Sutra. If women who seek sons bow and make offerings to Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva, they will give birth to blessed, virtuous, and wise sons. If they seek daughters, they will give birth to upright and handsome daughters, who have planted the roots of virtue in previous lives, and who are regarded and respected by all. Commentary: If women who seek sons bow and make offerings of fruits, flowers, and so forth to Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva, they will give birth to blessed, virtuous, and wise sons. If they seek sons, they will have sons. If they seek daughters, they will give birth to upright and handsome daughters. Their noses will look like noses. Their eyes will look like eyes. Their ears will look like ears, and their lips will look like lips. Well, could somebody have eyes that don't look like eyes? You ask. Some people have triangular eyes. In China, we say these eyes are Zhangshigui eyes. Zhangshigui was a treacherous official during the Tang Dynasty in China. 
He had a very bad character and cheated everyone. And he had three cornered eyes. Most people's eyes just go straight across, but his were triangular. So you should remember, if you become friends with such people, then you will have a hard time. Zhang Shi Gui eyes make a person very hard to get along with. Can a nose not look like a nose? You ask. Sometimes people have a nose that sticks in instead of out, or it looks as if someone had bit it off. Some people's ears look like a little mouse's ears, really tiny. Some have ears as long as a rabbit's. Is that good looking? If one's earlobes hang down like the Buddha's, they can be said to be good ears. But if one's ears are long in the other direction, that is, they stick way up in the air, then they don't even look like ears, except maybe rabbit's ears. Some people's lips don't look like lips. Some people have their noses and mouths stuck right together with their ears. They don't even look human. Even dogs aren't that ugly and weird. Some people like dogs, and they want to look like dogs too. But these people with their noses, mouths, and ears all grown together don't even look as good as dogs. They may have hair lips or be bow-legged. If a daughter looked like that. No one would like it because she wouldn't be proper and attractive. In general, women who are deformed have a hard time getting married or even getting a boyfriend. Everyone is afraid of them. However, upright and handsome daughters are those who have planted roots of virtue in previous lives. Why are they upright and beautiful? Beautiful people in their former lives made offerings of flowers and other things to the Buddhas. During the summer session, one of my disciples said, "No wonder all the women are making offerings of flowers to the Buddha. They want to be beautiful." These attractive daughters being discussed. Are ones who are regarded and respected by all. Everyone is fond of them. Sutra. In exhaustible intention, Guanshuyin Bodhisattva has powers such as these. If there are living beings who reverently bow to Guanshuyin Bodhisattva, they will be blessed, and their efforts will not be in vain. Commentary. Having talked about these two kinds of seeking, seeking for a son, and seeking for a daughter. And also, having talked about the seven kinds of difficulties and the three poisons, the Buddha now calls out: Inexhaustible intention. Washer Yambodi Sattva has powers such as these, as just described above. If there are living beings who reverently bow to Guanshuyin Bodhisattva, they will be blessed, and their efforts will not be in vain. If they can very respectfully pay homage to Guanshuyin Bodhisattva, they will certainly be rewarded with blessings. Sutra. Therefore, living beings should all receive and uphold the name of Guanshuyin Bodhisattva. Commentary. 
Therefore, living beings should all receive and uphold the name of Guanxuyin Bodhisattva. Receive and uphold means to recite, to keep the name of Guanxuyin Bodhisattva always in mind. If you can recite the name of Guanxuyin Bodhisattva, there is inconceivable power there. Sutra, inexhaustible intention. If a person were to receive and uphold the names of bodhisattvas in number as the grains of sand in sixty-two koti of Ganges rivers, and in addition were to exhaustively make offerings to them of food, drink, clothing, bedding, and medicine. What do you think? Would that good man's or good woman's merit and virtue be great or not? Inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva replied, "Very great, world-honored one." The Buddha said, "If another person were to receive and uphold the name of Guanxuyin Bodhisattva, and bow." And make offerings, but once, that person's blessings would be equal to and not different from the other person's. They could not be exhausted in hundreds of thousands of myriads of koti of eons. Commentary. Inexhaustible intention. If a person were to receive and uphold the names of bodhisattvas in number as the grains of sand in sixty-two koti of Ganges rivers, receive and uphold means reciting the name not of Guanxuyin Bodhisattva, but of other bodhisattvas, an incredible number of them, and. Not only that, if the person, in addition, were to exhaustively make offerings to them of food, drink, clothing, bedding, and medicine, what do you think? Suppose this person, throughout his entire life, presents those four kinds of offerings to the Triple Jewel. Would that good man's or good woman's merit and virtue be great or not? Inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva replied, "Very great, world-honored one." The Buddha said, "If another person were to receive and uphold the name of Guanxuyin Bodhisattva, and bow." And make offerings, but once he doesn't have to make offerings for his entire life. He only has to do it once, just for a moment. Then that person's blessings would be equal to and not different from the other person's. His blessings wouldn't differ from those gained by the first person who made offerings to bodhisattvas as many as the sands of sixty-two koti of Ganges rivers. They could not be exhausted in hundreds of thousands of myriads of koti of eons. Sutra. Inexhaustible intention. One who receives and upholds the name of Guanxuyin Bodhisattva obtains the benefit of blessings and virtues as limitless and boundless as those. Commentary. Inexhaustible intention. Shakyamuni Buddha continues: One who receives and upholds and recites 
The name of Gua Shi Yin Bodhisattva obtains the benefits of blessings and virtues as limitless and boundless as those. Sutra. Inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva said to the Buddha, "World honored one, how does Gua Shi Yin Bodhisattva roam through this Saha world?" How does he speak the Dharma for living beings? How does he carry out this work with the power of expedience? Commentary: Inexhaustible intention, Bodhisattva said to the Buddha, "World honored one." How does Gua Shi Yin Bodhisattva roam through this Saha world? Saha is a Sanskrit word which means worthy of being endured. We say worthy because although this world is filled with suffering, living beings find it worthy of being endured. It's not easy to bear this pain. There is so much suffering in the Saha world. How can Gua Shi Yin Bodhisattva teach and transform living beings here? How does he speak the Dharma for living beings? How does he carry out this work with the power of expedience? Sutra. The Buddha told inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva. Good man, if living beings in this land must be saved by means of someone in the body of a Buddha, Gua Shi Yin Bodhisattva will manifest in the body of a Buddha and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a Pratyeka Buddha, he will manifest in the body of a Pratyeka Buddha and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a hearer, he will manifest in the body of a hearer and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of the Brahma king, he will manifest in the body of the Brahma king and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of Chakra. He will manifest in the body of Chakra and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of the God of Sovereignty, he will manifest in the body of the God of Sovereignty and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of the Great God of Sovereignty, he will manifest in the body of the Great God of Sovereignty and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a great heavenly general, he will manifest in the body of a great heavenly general and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of Vaishravana, he will manifest in the body of Vaishravana and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a minor king. He will manifest in the body of a minor king and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of an elder, he will manifest in the body of an elder and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a layman, he will manifest in the body of a layman and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a minister of state, he will manifest in the body of a minister of state and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a brahman, he will manifest in the body of a brahman and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a bhikshu, bhikshuni, upasika or upasika. He will manifest in the body of a bhikshu, bhikshuni, upasika, or upasika, and speak dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of the wife of an elder, 
a layman, of a minister of state, or of a Brahmin, he will manifest in a wife's body and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a pure youth or a pure maiden, he will manifest in the body of a pure youth or a pure maiden and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a heavenly dragon, Yaksha, Gandharva, Ashura, Garuda, Kinara, Mohoraga, human or non-human and so forth, he will manifest in such a body and speak Dharma for them. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a Vajra-wielding spirit, he will manifest in the body of a Vajra-wielding spirit and speak Dharma for them. Commentary The Buddha told inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva, Good man, if living beings in this land in the three thousand great thousand world system must be saved by means of someone in the body of a Buddha. Guanshir Yin Bodhisattva will manifest in the body of a Buddha and speak Dharma for them. But Guanshir Yin is a Bodhisattva. He isn't a Buddha. How can he manifest as a Buddha? Isn't that just being an imposter? You ask. No, Guanshiryan Bodhisattva became a Buddha limitless eons ago. His Buddha name was Proper Dharma Brightness, thus come one. After becoming a Buddha, he didn't forget about living beings. He came back to the world again, hiding the great and manifesting the small. He hid away the Buddha body and manifested a Bodhisattva body. Arhats may go from the small to the great, but Guajuryan Bodhisattva went from the great, from the Buddha position, back to the Bodhisattva position. This is called putting the boat of compassion in reverse in order to save living beings. It's similar to putting the car in reverse. Guashiryan Bodhisattva went backwards from Buddhahood into Bodhisattvahood in order to guide living beings. He hid the great and manifested the small. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a Pratyeka Buddha, he will manifest in the body of a Pratyeka Buddha and speak Dharma for them. Pratyeka Buddhas are those enlightened by conditions. When the Buddha is in the world, they are called those enlightened by conditions. When there is no Buddha in the world, they are called solitarily enlightened ones. When the Buddha is in the world, Pratyeka Buddhas cultivate the twelve causes and conditions and awaken to the way. They realize that everything is suffering, impermanent, empty, and without self. Knowing this, they put everything down and gain enlightenment. When there is no Buddha in the world, they also cultivate the twelve causes and conditions. In the spring, they watch the myriad flowers bloom. In the autumn, they watch the yellow leaves fall. Observing the unceasing changes of nature, they wake up to the four marks of conditioned existence. Production, dwelling, decay and emptiness, all of which are impermanent, and they gain enlightenment. Guanshir Yim Bodhisattva observes the causal conditions of living beings. He has the penetration of the heavenly eye and the penetration of the heavenly ear. With the heavenly eye he sees afar and with the heavenly ear 
he hears afar. If he sees a living being who should be saved by a Prateka Buddha, he manifests as a Prateka Buddha and speaks the Dharma of the twelve causes and conditions for them. Don't you know where your ignorance comes from? It comes from a single thought of non-enlightenment. Your one thought of non-enlightenment produced ignorance in the treasury of the thus come one. With ignorance there was activity. He speaks the Dharma to that living being. Having heard the Dharma, this potential Prateka Buddha quickly gets enlightened. Then, Guanshiryin Bodhisattva causes him to bring forth the Bodhisattva resolve and go from the small towards the great. If they must be saved by someone in the body of a hearer, he will manifest in the body of a hearer and speak Dharma for them. The hearers are arhats. Those enlightened by conditions and hearers together make up the two vehicles. Hearers are those who awaken to the way when they heard the sound of the Buddha's voice as he taught the four holy truths. The four holy truths are suffering, accumulation, extinction, and the way. Shakyamuni Buddha turned the Dharma wheel of the four truths three times for the five bhikshus. After he gained enlightenment, the Buddha went to the deer park to speak the Dharma for the five bhikshus, including Ajanata Kaundinya. Ajanata Kaundinya and the others were not bhikshus in the beginning. They only became bhikshus after the Buddha spoke Dharma for them. The Buddha spoke the four truths in three ways. The first turning is called the demonstration turning. He said, 1. This is suffering. It is oppressive in nature. It's unbearable. There are three kinds of suffering, the suffering of suffering, the suffering of decay, and the suffering of process. There are also eight kinds of suffering, birth, old age, sickness, death, being separated from what you love, being joined to what you hate not getting what you want, and the raging blaze of the five skandhas. Suffering bears down on people to the point that they never know a moment's peace. It pushes people so hard that they can't breathe. People are oppressed by all kinds of suffering. Two. This is accumulation. Its nature is to beckon. Accumulation refers to the amassing of afflictions. Where do afflictions come from? From suffering. One suffers to the point that one can't stand it and then one gets angry. Three. This is extinction. Its nature is that it can be certified to. One can be certified to the bliss of still extinction, to the wonderful fruit of nirvana. 4. This is the way. Its nature is that it can be cultivated. Everyone can cultivate the way. There is not a single person who isn't qualified. Everyone can be certified to the principal substance, 
of Nirvana. The second turning of the Four Truths is the Certification Turning. One, this is suffering. I already know it. Two, this is accumulation. I have already cut it off. Three, this is extinction. I have already been certified to it. Four, this is the way. I have already cultivated it. Shakyamuni Buddha then spoke the third turning of the wheel of four truths, the exhortation turning. He said, One, this is suffering. You should know it. Two, this is accumulation. You should cut it off. Three, this is extinction. You should certify to it. Four, this is the way. You should walk it. He turned the Dharma wheel of the four truths three times. When the five bhikshus heard it, they got enlightened. And since they were awakened by the Buddha's sound, they are called hearers. The hearers and those enlightened by conditions are called the two vehicles. Those of the two vehicles are just the small vehicle. What's small about them? What's great about the great vehicle? Basically, nothing is small and nothing is great. Great and small are based on the discriminating thoughts of living beings. Some minds are small, and some are great. Originally, the mind extends to the ends of space and the Dharma realm. We, however, aren't able to use the original thus come one's treasury nature. Some can use a small part of it. Others can use a little more. Some can use the entire nature. Those who can use the entire nature are Buddhas. They have returned to the root and gone back to the source. Those who use a large part of it are Bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas have great wisdom, and so they can utilize more of the treasures of their original home. Those of the small vehicle know less, use less, and so they are called the small vehicle. If Guashir Yim Bodhisattva meets a living being with the potential of a hearer, he manifests in the body of a hearer and speaks the Dharma to save them.